Yo, 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 Donnell in high school. This is 8.2 Nuclear Physics. This is Mr. Aiden, your favorite teacher, and here we go, Nuclear Physics. When we talk about nuclear physics, we're talking about things in the nucleus or things in the atom, okay? Really, really small stuff, and so nuclear physics is going to be highly explosive, okay? So let's take a look at um, our charges and our mass of our different particles. Let's take a look at our charges first. A proton has a charge of 1.6 times 10 to negative 19th coulombs, okay? It's positive, though. It's positive. A neutron, of course, has no charge, no charge. Just like when you come to class, I don't charge you to learn, okay? So no charge for a neutron. Electrons are going to be negative 1.6 times 10 to negative 19th, which means a proton and electron cancel each other out. And a positron is going to be positive 1.6 times 10 to negative 19th coulombs. I hope you see a trend here okay, is that everything's going to have the same charge of 1.6 times 10 to negative 19th coulombs. But let's take a look at a mass. The mass of a proton is 1.67 times 10 to negative 27th kilograms. It's pretty big, even though it's 0.0000000, it's really small, it's still actually pretty big. A neutron actually weighs the exact same amount. A proton and neutron, you know, is in the nucleus, and that is where all the mass of the atom comes from. An electron, though, has a much, much smaller mass. It's about 1,000 times less, which means it's practically nothing, okay? And that's 9.11 times 10 to negative 31st kilograms. If you remember back to chemistry, an electron weighed literally nothing, okay? It's really, really small. And a positron is the same mass of an electron, which you can see, hopefully, that an electron and a positron are the exact same thing. They're antimatter, okay, where one has a positive charge, the other has a negative charge, but they both have the same mass. Now, you must be thinking to yourself, how am I going to remember these numbers, okay? You don't have to remember these numbers. They are on your equation sheet, okay? You do not have to. It tells you the proton's mass, the neutron's mass, the electron's mass. It tells you the charge of an electron, okay? You just kind of have to know what they have relatively, okay, in order to do any of one of these problems, okay? Let's take a look now at the difference between nuclear fission and nuclear fusion, okay? Fission is when we have things breaking down. We have a radioactive element like uranium, and what do you know? It is highly unstable, and what do you know? It spontaneously emits particles. It breaks down, okay? Whereas fusion is where you can see the, just think of the terms, fusion, fusing something, means combining two things together. It might be combining a deuterium and a tritium and uh, all those things that, just like they had in Spider-Man and all those different uh, movies, okay, is nuclear fusion. Fusion is a lot more energy, okay, whereas fission is a lot of energy. That's what we dropped on Hirsh Hiroshima and Nagasaki was a nuclear fission bomb, but fusion would literally just destroy it forever, okay? Um, let me show you a nuclear fission problem. Here we have uranium. We have uranium. And uranium has a mass of 238, and it has 92 protons, or, or we could say it has a charge of 92, okay? And we have, it, it breaks down, and it's going to break down into eight heliums, and each helium has a mass of four and a charge of two, okay? And we're going to have six electrons. Now, what did we say about an electron? An electron doesn't have any mass. It's zero mass, and it's got a negative one charge, okay? And so what other particle will break down into? Well, guys, we kind of have to go back to the conservation of mass here, okay? And you can see a 238 is on the top, and a 92 is on the bottom. And this arrow is kind of like an equal sign. And you can see the helium, we have 8 heliums, so 8 times 4 is a ma total mass of 32. And the charges is 8 times 2 is 16, okay? And you can see the electron, 6 times 0 is, of course, 0, and 6 times negative 1 equals negative 6. So what do we just have to do? We just have to do a simple addition or subtraction, a simple algebra problem. You can see 238, just look at the top numbers, 238 equals 32 plus 206. That's what we have, 206. And on the bottom, we have 92 is equal to 16 minus 6. That's really 10. And you can see I'm left with 82. And 82 is a new element. And if you look on the periodic table, 82 is actually 
lead. And so this would be a multiple choice problem, and so you wouldn't have to need a periodic table or anything like that. You can just look at the numbers, and really we're just adding in these nuclear fission problems. Let me show you a nuclear fusion problem. This is right off an AP exam. Here we have a deuterium nucleus that's two, a mass of two, uh, one proton there, plus a lithium nucleus that's seven and three, okay? And you can see, what am I going to get from this? The top number has to be 9, the mass has to be 9, and the charge has to be 4. And so I need to have a 9 up the top, I need to have a 4 on the bottom. And you can take a look, look at A. A, just look at the top numbers. We have 4 plus 3 plus 2, that's 9. At the bottom numbers, we have 2 plus 1 plus 1, that's 4. So A is all cool, okay? Let's look at B. Let's look at the top numbers. We have 2 times 3, that's 6, plus one more, that's 7, plus the two neutrons right there, that's 9. I'm cool there. Let's look at the bottom numbers. 2 times 1, I'm plus 1, that's 3, plus 0. That is not good, so that is not correctly balanced. If you look at C, we have a 9 up the top, 8 plus 1, we have a 4 on the bottom, 3 plus 1. And, of course, D is going to work as well. We have 2 times 4, that's 8, plus 1, that's 9. 2 times 2, that's 4, so that works. And E, of course, will work as well. We have 9 up the top, 4 down the bottom. And so the answer, of course, for this one would be B. That's a nuclear fusion problem, okay? We have uh, another thing. We have our nice uh, Albert Einstein crazy hair, crazy dude. Um, his equation is for rest energy, and whenever we talk about rest energy, if you see if you see a, a nuclear problem where there's absolutely no no numbers whatsoever, dude, you're going to use E equals mc squared, okay? And this is also called rest energy, okay? And that is equal to mass times the speed of light squared. And you can see why we can use this with no numbers because if we're talking about an electron, we're talking about a mass of 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms. Okay, and that's a constant, and you know that number, okay? And we can multiply that by E equals MC squared, making sure we square the C. And guys, that energy, the energy of a, the rest energy of a, an electron is always the same. It always ends up being 8.2, 8.2 times 10 to the negative 14 joules, okay? Which, if we divide that by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th, joules for every electron volt, that would give us exactly 5, 1, 2, 4, 3, 7 electron volts. That is stinking a lot of energy, and that's why uh, nuclear bombs are, uh, are not very nice to keep around, okay? That's 512 electron volts. That is huge amount of energy. We have uh, just two more things in nuclear, and that is a thing called pair production. You can see what's happening here is a photon of light, so actually light, is coming and it can create matter, believe it or not, okay? So a light can come along, this is a nuclear reaction, okay? It can come along and it creates an electron and a positron, and you can see there is charges that are conserved. So all the charges are conserved and it just, a photon just, just moving along and bam, it just creates an electron and a positron and we call that pair you can see a pair, there's two of them, pair production. And there, there has to be a conservation of, of momentum as well, okay? We also have a thing called annihilation, okay? And annihilation is when we have an, ele an electron and a positron, and they annihilate each other. They hit each other, and they form this, in that middle, is called a photon of light. And so a lot of times we have pair production with annihilation, okay? We also have Bohr, Bohr energy levels, okay, Bohr energy levels. And you can see, if you go back to, um, to AP chemistry and things like that, you can see the, the principal quantum number, the N equals 1, is the lowest energy, the lowest energy. And so an electron would be right there, okay? And you could put in energy, and that electron will jump up. It will get excited up to the N equals 2, okay? And so you can put in energy in order to do that. How much energy? Well, you take 13.6, you subtract 3.4, and you get 11.2. So if we put in 11.2 electron volts, it'll jump up. And guess what's going to happen is 
that electron will go back down and it'll give off energy in the form of light, a wavelength of light. And it will actually give off the exact same amount of energy, 11.2 electron volts. Okay, And you can see how as we go up and up towards n equals infinity, you can see the n equals infinity is zero electron volts, it, can, it will continue to get smaller and smaller and smaller in terms of the energy levels. Okay, please disregard the negatives here. Okay, the negatives we're really just looking at transitions. So we're just looking at the difference between 13.6 and and 3.4. But please, that the most negative value is always going to be the n equals one, the lowest energy le level final. Okay, and so because we're using photons of light, guys, we can use our light equations. And guys, that is 8.2 nuclear physics, and I hope. I hope that uh, this this worked out for you, and I hope that you, you kind of understood it. Okay, make sure you take a look at 8.3. 8.3 is our where I'm going to show you two problems. Two problems. Okay, guys, take it easy. Wiggity whack. Don't talk back.